Hey everybody, welcome to the next video that I'm doing for the uh, Neaters Palooza podcast. Um, so for this one I wanted to throw a little Vikings history at you. So um, what I chose to talk about was Berserkers. Um, they're pretty cool, there's a lot of myths and legends that come from them. Uh, so I thought it'd be a really fun one to talk about and maybe teach you guys a couple things about them. So what Berserkers were uh, was it was a type of warrior that they still don't know for sure all the facts on it. There's a lot of theories on it, a lot of different thoughts on that. But basically they were thought to be, uh, there's actually a saying that they couldn't be touched by iron or fire. Uh, They're extremely strong warriors, they had a high endurance. Um, at one point it was thought that it was something that was only pla- passed down through the bloodlines and that it was a family thing. Uh, there are other people that thought that this was something that could be taught uh, because the way that they, the, they called it the Berserker Fury. Um, and what this was, uh, depending on which version you believe, was that the Berserker could put himself into a trance that would give him superhuman strength, uh, higher reflexes, more endurance, and that he couldn't be hurt by swords and fire and you know any kind of attacks. Uh, they wouldn't wear armor. Uh, the only things that they would wear into battle, they would typically go shirtless, but they would wear either a wolf skin or a bear skin, uh, wearing you know so it'd have like the wolf head on for a hat or a bear hat. Uh, that was all they would wear. Now. That's why they're also talked about, and sometimes they're called wolf skins or bear skins. Uh, the bear skins is up to interpretation if they ever actually did that, because some feel that the interpretation was done wrong, and what they meant by bear skin was not bear the animal, but bear as in shirtless, so B A R E. Uh, so they would call them bear skins because of that, because like I said, they wouldn't wear shirts or armor in battle. Um, the cool thing about that is. Well, before I go farther into that, so the reason that they would wear these, one was for an intimidation factor, but the other reason was to let people know that they were in fact berserkers, because even though it would give them the superhuman strength and they'd be able to do all this great stuff, it put them into basically a blind rage and they would attack anybody and everything around them, including their own allies, because once they went into this trance, they were just mindless killing machines that would just rampage through everybody. So um, the crazy thing about that is they would have these on and even their own men, uh, their allies, when they would go into battle, they would stay away from them as well because they knew that as soon as this person goes into this rage that they could easily be targeted and it wouldn't matter. The the ally, the berserker, would cut them down just as much as the enemy. Um, So they were basically just this wild killing machine that they would throw out into the middle of battle and just hope for the best that they would just tear through and you know wipe out their entire enemy um now the other cool thing about the wolf skins other than it being for uh an intimidation factor and a um recognition so that people knew who and what they were uh this because they would wear these wolf skins there is some uh thought that berserkers are actually where the myth of werewolves came from kind of for the same reason because people would see these men uh, go on killing sprees, these indiscernibles killing sprees, they'd be wearing wolf skins and they would be acting completely normal and then they would suddenly put themselves into this trance or they would go into this trance and then they would just go through killing everybody and anything and like I said they wouldn't be picking and choosing who it was, it was just anybody and everything was fair game. So. There is a there is a theory that that's actually where werewolves where the myth of werewolves comes from, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Now the other things other than it being a trance, there's been like I said, there's a few different ones. Um, now they may only some be right, they may all be right uh, as to what actually caused the berserker fury. Some said that it was a training regime, like I said, where they could put themselves into a trance and it was something that could be taught. Other people said that it was in fact hereditary, but not in a good way, that it was actually the person was having a epileptic uh, seizure, basically, or going into a state, um, 
basically having an epileptic event to where they couldn't control what was happening. And they would just say, and they would normally know that this was coming on. If you know anything about people that have epilepsy, you know, some, some of them will say that they can feel it coming on. They, they have kind of a feeling and a warnings and warning signs that it's about to happen. So with that train of thought, uh, they would they would say that the Berserker Fury was coming on, which it wasn't anything that they could really predict or make happen. Um, they did say that high stress situations would cause these to happen, um, and that some of them that even if it was uh, this epileptic event, that they knew what caused it, and they would basically cause this. They would do whatever it, whatever they needed to to cause the event when they were ready to fight. However, because they couldn't always control it. Uh, one of the things that was kind of crazy is because if you with Vikings, they're sailing across these seas, they're in ships, you're in very close quarters, obviously, if you're on a ship. And when the Berserker would let them know that, hey, this is coming on, they would actually have to stop and go ashore, and they would send us, and they would send the Berserker out into basically the woods and to buy a tree and rocks and then they would leave him there and they would sail back out they wouldn't completely leave but they would leave him there and then they would sail out to the sea so that they couldn't be attacked by him and they would just let them go to town and basically they said that they would they would chop down trees they would be smashing rocks they would be doing all these things um and they couldn't feel any of this because they were going through this through this event uh so that was where they said that they would be unkillable because they would be you know taking damage and getting hurt, uh, but they couldn't feel any of it because they were going through this event. Now, the other one uh, that people have said, and they've actually, um, there has been some evidence to suggest that one of the theories is that they would actually basically drug themselves and that they would take certain, they would grind up certain seeds. Seeds are what they found. Um, I can't remember the name of the seeds off the top of my head, but they did find a certain type of seed in a uh, tomb or a or a not a tomb but a burial for one of them and when they tested they found out that this seed when it was crushed up and put into a powder uh and that it would basically cause you to it would cause num numbing so they wouldn't necessarily get stronger in that event but it would make their skin numb and that they wouldn't feel pain because they had basically just drugged themselves to not feel that way uh kind of in the same way that I've heard people describe like PCP where they say you get so high on this stuff that you can't feel pain and, uh, and guys will, you know, punch through a car window or, you know, punch a punch right through a wooden wall or something like that. And they won't feel pain. And you'll, you know, of course, if you see that you think, holy crap, this person's really strong, but it's really just cause they're drugged up. They can't feel it. And later on, they're really going to be hurting. Um, so those are, those are a few of the berserker things uh, or theories of to what actually caused this trance or the Berserker Fury, the Rage, um, lots of different names that they go by. Uh, it is obviously something that went through history because today we still use that term of if somebody's, you know, going crazy or doing these crazy things and being destructive, we still say they are going berserk. Um, so it has been something that's been passed down through the ages. Uh, originally, it was a quality that a lot of the chieftains or earls would look for. Um, one of them, which seems a little crazy to me, but uh, one of the history books that I was reading said that there were, actually was a earl that would even use berserkers as his personal guard. Now, that seems crazy to me because if they are going to go in this fury and you don't know that it's going to happen, that seems pretty risky for a commander or a leader to do. However, if these were the berserker types that uh, knew how to put themselves in a trance or, you know, drug themselves to get that way, then I guess that's a little more believable. Um, now, eventually, the having the berserk fury was thought of as a good thing, uh, especially in combat when... Uh, you know, when they were going out to fight, or with Vikings when they were more of a warring people. Um, but through the years, they actually started to outlaw the Berserk Fury, as they called it at that time, that it became something that you were not supposed to do. You, It was no longer taught as to how to put the people in the trance. Uh, the, if you were using the medication or you were drugging yourselves, it was uh, considered an offense and a crime for you to be doing that. Um, didn't really say what they did for people that it actually was a epileptic uh, 
reaction, but um, who knows, back then it was a lot more violent time, so they probably sealed them away somewhere, or they may have just killed them, I'm not sure. Um, but it did become outlawed. So uh, that was just a little bit of a history fact on uh, Berserkers. I think it's uh, pretty cool just to know a lot of the different facts and where this stuff came from. Uh, they are featured in uh, Vikings the TV show, and um, there will be one of the characters I am going to consider the Berserker uh, in the Neater's Palooza. So um, I haven't... Uh, well, I guess I'll just tell you. I'm going to consider Bjorn the Berserker. Not that he is in the uh, TV show, but I really just like the idea of having a Berserker. So I'm going to play with the story a little bit, and he's going to be the Berserker. Uh, so that's just a little bit of the history for Vikings, guys. Uh, hopefully you found it as interesting as I did, and I will do another video soon. Thanks.